Broadcasting live from the studios of World Dairy Expo in Madison, Wisconsin, USA. This is WXPO News. Good morning and welcome to World Dairy Expo. We're so glad that Mother Nature finally cooperated today. Hello and welcome to WXPO News at 10 on this Tuesday morning, October 2nd. I'm your host, Laura Hirschlib. Throughout this week, we'll be bringing you live coverage and offering up a 360 degree look at World Dairy Expo each day. Here's what's coming up on today's show. Yesterday, youth dairy judges from around the country and the world competed on the colored shavings in national and international competitions. We have full results and interviews with the winners ahead. Allison Wedig, Public Relations Marketing Specialist with Culver's Franchising System, is stopping by later on to talk about the Culver's Thank You Farmers campaign. And FFA members from across the country visit World Dairy Expo each year on opening day. Stay tuned to learn more about what they are doing at the show today. But first, the 52nd World Dairy Expo has already been breaking records. Sunday's youth bidding contest saw a record 34 participants, spanning in age from 14 to 21, rep representing 12 U.S. states, two Canadian provinces, and the country of Germany. Win intermediate female division was Haley Hukma of New Richmond, Wisconsin, and Dylan Freeman from Bremen, Indiana. Grant Fremstead was named the champion in the senior male division, the largest category of the contest. And winning the senior female division was Lisa Kramer, who came all the way from Germany. We're so excited to welcome Lisa to our newsroom a bit later on to talk about her win. The inaugural World Dairy Expo Showmanship Judges Clinic was held yesterday. David Crack of Richmond, Quebec, Canada, one of our 2017 youth showmanship contest judges led the workshop. The workshop included in instruction, discussion, and a mock contest. World Dairy Expo is pleased to be at the center of developing consistency in showmanship judging across the continent. Showmanship will be in the spotlight again on Thursday when the WDEU Showmanship Contest takes the center stage in the show ring. Speaking of great events on the colored shavings, Expo's tradition of colored shavings is back once again. Beginning in 1984, colored shavings have been a vocal point for our historic show ring. The shavings at the 52nd World Dairy Expo were unveiled on Sunday as Sonoma Red to match the theme for this year, the next frontier. Coming up on WXPO News, we will have Mark Oppold from RFD TV to give our market reports. But first, a word from our sponsors. I need to.
newest member of Dairy Tech's herd was bred to help you with the newest member of yours. She's the perfect cross of Dairy Tech pasteurization technology and the simplicity of the perfect udder colostrum management system. At half the price of any competitive product on the market, pasteurizing and warming your colostrum has never been easier or more cost effective. Say hello, Matilda. Check her out at perfectutter.com. Welcome back. It's a pleasure to have Mark Oppold of RFD TV here with us to give our markets. Good morning, Mark. Hey, Laura, Here's thank hoping. you. <laughs> great doing to great. be here. Uh, I didn't want to interrupt you, go ahead. But uh, it's good, great to be here and be part of the uh, farm broadcasters who are helping out here uh, with your uh, news each day. The farm babe, uh, Pam Yonke, uh, got a couple of broadcasters together and I was the first in line this morning. So we're certainly glad to be here and, and give you some of the market information today. By the way, just real quick, uh, proud that RFD TV is here each and every year at the World Dairy Expo, wouldn't miss it. Uh, we haven't been here 50 years, but if we were in business that long, we would have been here in Madison, Wisconsin. So those folks out there, uh, we know we have a lot of support in, in the dairy country for RFD TV, and we really appreciate you listeners to uh, rural radio and viewers of RFD TV. All right, well, all the news of uh, yesterday certainly uh, gave the market a boost here with the uh, agreement with Canada and Mexico. Still a lot of that to being talked about today here in Madison, Wisconsin, but the markets have actually set back a little bit here uh, as they normally do when they have a little run up, they'll take some back and we'll see kind of where that medium ground is when they want to rebound and uh, head back up. Many think that they will longer term, but today, as we sit here today, I'm giving you the news that's a little bit weaker. Although corn is up, uh, last time I looked up a half to three quarters, I have December last look at 366 and a half. Beans uh, higher by two to three. Now they were lower early, so we're already seeing the effects here of a little bit higher trade here after a little bit of weakness early in the session today. Right now, November is up three at 861. The wheat trade is a bit weaker. It started that way, not a lot, about a half a cent to a penny lower uh, in Chicago and in Kansas City. I wanna turn over to the uh, livestock trade though and looking at the live cattle futures. They are a bit lower today. What you might expect, if we continue to move the grain markets higher, these cattle and the hog futures are likely going to see some pressure, analysts suggest, and they are today. 60 to 80 points lower for live cattle today. December down 82, right now sitting at 118.12. That was last look. Feeder cattle, 85 to 90 points lower this morning. That November contract is the most active, and right now it's down 85 at 158.17. And we move over to the uh, hog complex. Lean hogs are mixed a little bit uh, higher in the October. Uh, it's in now in delivery, of course, being into October. So the December contract becomes more active. It's down 62 points today at uh, 59.22. Uh, Governor Scott Walker is going to be here on the grounds uh, on Friday uh, talking about a lot of things, of course, but headlining his interest here in talking to farmers and ranchers is the new agreement with Canada and Mexico. Looking forward to having him here at World Dairy Expo, another example of how important this show is in its 51st year, by the way. And uh, looking across uh, else elsewhere in farm news today, the uh, harvest ahead of schedule for the most part. I was talking to Pam Yonke this morning before coming on. She was saying, Mark, I had a 40 degree difference from where I live in Wisconsin and broadcasters I talked to in Indiana yesterday. We were wearing uh, coats and gloves here yesterday, watching the Brewers win, by the way, here in the Madison area. In Chicago, they were in light jackets, but in Indiana, it was even 30 degrees warmer than that. So uh, the rain in this area continues on and off the rest of this week. Laura is talking about finally getting a break, and she's right. It's cloudy today, but it's not raining here. So if you're on your way to Madison, you're gonna see a little cloudy weather, but it's not raining, and they're looking forward to having you here. But that rain is gonna slow the harvest a little bit here. We're about 25% done in Wisconsin, uh, Pam told me, and about 13% done uh, for soybeans uh, as far as the Badger State's concerned. But a lot of other states, especially south of Interstate 80, are moving ahead of schedule and getting this crop out. It's only the 2nd of October, not the 2nd of November, so we always wanna get ahead of ourselves, but a lot of calendar left to get this crop in. But RFD TV is glad to be here, Laura, and I know you have another special guest here that is a winner uh, in this uh, early days of the World Dairy Expo, Laura. Thank you so much, Mark. And feel free to continue cheering for the brewers. Yeah. I mean, we'll welcome you all the that. fans yeah. on the bandwagon <laughs> that we need. So please come along. All right.
The intercollegiate dairy cattle judging contest took place on the colored shavings yesterday. 20 schools from across North America and one from Holland competed in the contest. We are honored to have Shelby Yeager from Virginia Tech University here with us this morning. And late last night, Shelby was named the top individual, high individual in the National Intercollegiate Contest. Welcome, Shelby. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. It is such an amazing accomplishment. Can you just talk, give us, share with our viewers a little bit about yourself and how it feels to be the top individual in the inter intercollegiate contest? Honestly, I'm, I'm still in shock. I was not prepared for, for anything like this to happen. Um, I'm from Frederick, Maryland. I come from a dairy farm. I, my father and his brother to my grandfather have all been involved in dairy judging. That's what really got me started in all this back when I was eight years old. Um, but I come from a 500-acre dairy, beef, and crop farm. Uh, we, re we have registered Holsteins. We show at the state and sometimes national level. Uh, dairy judging has always been a huge part of my life, and to get to come here and compete has just been such a great opportunity for me. That's amazing. And so what are you doing at Virginia Tech University? Can you talk a little bit about your what you're majoring in and what some of your career aspirations might be? I'm currently a double major in dairy science and agribusiness. I really want to focus on the business side of agriculture and really promote for everyone that is still involved in the industry and Absolutely. promote what we, what we still do. Definitely. So you said you got your judging start when you were eight years old yes. and had many generations of wonderful family members who really planted those seeds. I mean, what, does it, what did it take? How did you prepare for yesterday's contest and to have such a successful day? I mean, it's, it's such an accomplishment. I've had many coaches over the years really help me and push me to be who I am today. And competing in 4-H, I had the opportunity to judge here at the 4-H level a few years ago, and it didn't go exactly as I had hoped, and that really gave me the drive to push even harder coming to Virginia Tech and competing on their collegiate team. And I, my only goal was to be in the top 25, and I really blew my expectations out of the water. Yeah, you far exceeded that. And, you know, how did that experience when you were here for the 4-H contest? Did you feel maybe less nervous or maybe a little more comfortable on the color shavings? Did that help kind of set you up for some of the success that you had yesterday? And if so, how so? I was definitely less nervous yesterday than I was at the 4-H level. Um, it was a more familiar feeling being on the colored shavings and having two previous contests mm -hmm. um, behind me this season, really prepping me for what we had to do yesterday yesterday which other contests did you participate in already this year we competed at the Big E nice. um, and mm -hmm. in Harrisburg my teammates were high individual at the Big E and high individual at Harrisburg so to be able to come here and be high individual here is really a, a cool feeling that's really special for sure how else so you had the judging contest victory to in high individual to kick off the week what does the rest of your week entail Honestly, I'm here today and then I fly back to school on Wednesday. Uh, I have lots of schoolwork to do, unfortunately. <laughs> think you'll be able to sit in class and not think about, you know, how exciting Monday was? I, and I, I don't know. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah. What are some of the other activities that you do at Virginia Tech University? Can you tell us a little bit about more about your major, classes that you're taking, and just those experiences? Um, well, within the dairy club that I'm, I'm involved in, I'm the chairperson for our fall event this year which is a brand new event. It's uh, called Hokie Dairy Day. It's a youth educational event that we're hosting just in two weeks, actually. And it's been a whirlwind of uh, excitement and emotions trying to plan this because it's a brand new event. So we're basically running from the ground up. And what kind of event is it? Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Basically, we're inviting youth from across the state of Virginia to Virginia Tech, and we're doing hands-on activities involving all the types of things we learn within the dairy science major and really applying that to youth-based activities and uh, hands-on learning. That's great. And do you feel like some of the skills that you picked up by participating in dairy judging since so you were so young and refining your s skills as you went along in your judging career will help set you up for success and for that event? Oh, oh, for sure. The public speaking has been such a huge aspect of that and just being able to be comfortable meeting new people and uh, being in charge of things and being organized. That's wonderful. And so how far, how did you decide to go to Virginia Tech University? Honestly, Dr. Knowlton, who is my coach this year, she has been pushing me and pushing me since I was a little girl judging. And Virginia Tech's always felt like home. Mm -hmm. And 
going there for my first time visiting the school, you just get this feeling. It's such a great atmosphere. And you love the environment. And all the people in the dairy science department are so amazing and they really help you in anything you need. It really does, you know, having those incredible advisors goes yeah. such a long way to just really set you on a path for success for sure. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk a little bit more about your family. You said your grandfather was a judge, your father. Can you can you share a little bit about more about that family history yes. and certainly a source of pride as mm -hmm. it should be? My grandfather, Charlie Yeager, he was high individual in the 4-H division back when he judged and my uncle Mark Yeager was a high individual at the 4-H uh, cool. level as well. So for me to come and be able to accomplish such an achievement really gives me a lot of internal pride and uh, to represent my family well. My father, he judged um, in 4-H and at the collegiate level for a while, but he judges professionally at smaller level, mm -hmm. state level shows. Um, and being able to continue the family tradition has really been a great honor for me. Absolutely. And are, do you, are you able to with school? Obviously school is always so busy. Mm -hmm. Judging practice in the fall is, you know, very little free time. Are you able to get home and help on the farm? What are some of your responsibilities when you are home for your home um, operation? Well, this summer I was home. I was taking a few online classes this summer and that was really the only time I had because once we got back to school, every weekend has been practice, practice, practice. Uh, but after Expo's over, I'll, I'll hopefully have an opportunity to get home. Absolutely. And can you talk a little bit about now, based on going through a handful of contests and seeing yourself have lots of success, your teammates have success, any words of wisdom or you know tidbits of information to share with um, our younger viewers that might be listening or you know some kids in college that are aspiring to be on the judging team and you know hopefully be sitting in that spot one day? What would you what do you suggest? Um, honestly, just enjoy every moment of it. I, I wish I could go back to when I was eight years old, first learning how to judge. Take in everything that you can, listen to everybody that gives you any types of advice. And if you're scared or nervous about wanting to try out judging for the first time because you think you're too old or it's too late for you, um, just go for it. It's really a great opportunity, no matter how you place. I really recommend it for anybody that wants to try it. That's fantastic. Thank you Thank so you much, so Shelby. Much. Congratulations. It was, nice it was a pleasure to meet you as well. Coming up on the WXPO News, the International Post-Secondary Dairy Cattle Judging Contest features hands-on learning and intense competition. Join us after the break to hear more about the Fox Valley Technical College and their road to World Dairy Expo. But first, a word from our sponsors. We all know the value of colostrum to a newborn calf. The hard part is keeping a safe and easy to use supply on hand. Perfect Udder by Dairy Tech makes colostrum management easy. Collect it, pasteurize it, store it, warm it up, and feed it with a tube or nipple. All from a single use biosecure bag. Everybody loves a Perfect Udder. So ask for it by name, perfectudder.com.
This year's post-secondary judging contest featured 18 schools. The winning team hails from Sunny Cobleskill in New York. Last week, we had the chance to talk with Kevin Ruckel, an agribusiness instructor and dairy judging coach at Fox Valley Technical College, another one of the schools that participated in yesterday's um, post-secondary judging contest. Fox Valley Technical College is in Appleton, Wisconsin, and I'll turn it over to the feature about Kevin's school and program. Well, I've been here, I just celebrated my 19th, uh, just my past 19 years here, and I think I've missed maybe a year. I didn't go last year, maybe one other year, so 16, 17 years we've been going. And it seems like every year we're growing more and more in the World Dairy Expo. Uh, you know, it used to be I, I took the team down, we didn't have a booth, and then the booth changed. I've been staying down there all week. I've usually gone eight days. I, I think it's, it's twofold. Obviously, it's it's kind of a recruitment tool for us. Initially, that was our, our thoughts when we set up the educational booth and we try to recruit down there. But certainly with the judging team, we take them down for the experience of being, you know, to make decisions and, and verbalize those. We've been practicing a lot and we took the practice contest. So we've actually brought them in, taught them a little bit about uh, placing cattle, how to verbalize their um, moral reasons. But we're going beyond that, especially with the practical contest. Now we have to look into linear scoring. So actually, Saturday morning, we're going out by my cows out in Sherwood, and we're going to do some measurements on cows. So they kind of get, you know, like right here is so many inches as far as a cow's stature, how wide is her rear udder, how well attached is her fore udder, and, and we'll do that. So we, we've been practicing every day but Sunday. I only get a short time with these students, and we're busy. We, we really hit it hard. Practical side is really neat. They've got uh, four breakdowns, essentially. They've got the linear scoring of, of a group of cows. That's what I was kind of going through with the judgment of size and frame and stuff like that. But then they have uh, non-grade ID, so they'll bring in grade cows, and you've got a budget, and you've got to decide which cows you want to buy and which ones you don't. And that's one class, and then they do another one where they uh, bring in registered animals, and they'll have high prices. Uh, they'll have some high price because of genomics. They'll have other ones high price because of phenotype expression, and they've got to pick those. And then the last thing they got to do is they got to mate a heifer to her best sire. So they got to watch things like inbreeding, and if she's like really high in the pins, they got to make a decision to maybe breed her to a bull that's not so high in the pins. Pretty, pretty neat contest. Very practical. Fox Valley Tech in general, I think, you know, you probably kind of come here and be with us. We, we try to encourage, we get out to a lot of places such as World Air Expo, schools. We try to get people to actually come here and see what we do hands-on. Once they're here, the people really seem to buy into the technical college. And with the transferability into the River Falls and Platteville's of the world right now, what a stop. I mean, you think, you know, as being a parent of a college student, we're about half the price, the hands-on, for all the instructors here are farming. We know what's going on. We can share the day-to-day -day ups and downs, and the goods and the bads with the students. So it's really interesting. Uh, some things that are going on in our world is the change. Uh, it used to be male predominated. Now we're about 60% female. About 60% of the students that come here now have no ag background compared to almost 100% when I first started years ago. So it's really a neat time to be in agriculture. A lot of technology going on, a lot of changes. Winning that practical contest that Kevin described was Kaskakee College in Illinois. And please forgive me if I didn't pronounce your college name correctly. I apologize. But now I am joined with the joined by the winner of Sunday's senior female competition in our youth fitting contest, Lisa Kramer. Thank you so much, Lisa, for joining me this morning. We are so excited to have you here, and yeah. a welcome and congratulations. Thank Lisa, you. can you tell us a little bit about yourself? And you traveled all the way from Germany. How, how did you learn about World Dare Expo's Youth Fitting Contest? And share some more. Uh, um, yeah, I, uh, um, I read this uh, on Facebook and on Instagram, and I see this, and then I talk about uh, I thought about it and after it and but I wasn't that sure but uh, after it and then some people say go and en enter the 
a little contest and uh, yeah and so the the idea is good and so then um, I figured out how we can how we uh, can make this and uh, yeah and then there's a um, opportunity to uh, get a heifer from Ocean View and I uh, got the um, yeah that's a farm where I do my internship now and uh, so I'm very happy about this about her offer to get the this uh, heifer and yeah and she's pretty good uh, prepared for this uh, sitting com contest so yeah that's wonderful yeah. and how so you mentioned you have an internship with ocean view genetics can you talk a little bit about is that just through world dairy expo or can you talk about how that all came to be uh, i also on facebook i s see that they searching for internships so and i want to went to the u.s uh, this year too and to especially for the world dairy expo and um, yeah, there's a month time to uh, for me at home, so uh, I came here for a month. So yeah, and now I'm uh, a week uh, here. We're so glad that you came over. So yeah. tell tell us about home, Germany. What I mean, your hometown, your home operation, your family. Give us some more information. Uh, um, yeah, we uh, yeah since I was a little child, I was. Uh, fascinated by the cows and uh, yeah we work a lot with them and uh, yeah then in the age of nine I uh, uh, do my first showmanship and then in the age of 14 I had the first uh, 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 yeah, how I learn uh, a seminar like where I learn uh, the uh, how to clip a mm heifer -hmm. for a show, and so then we practice on our our uh, own heifers, and yeah, then we practice, practice, uh, uh, learn, uh, yeah, see how the other do this, and look, oh, that might be a good idea too, mm -hmm. and. Yeah, ask and try out, and so now, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what other have you competed in other fitting contests as well? And if so, where? Uh, yeah, we uh, in my home state. I we uh, yeah, I competed every year, and uh, yeah, at the Germany national uh, fitting contest also. And the last year I got second there, and uh, then we uh, had a chance to go to the European uh, clipping contest and showmanship, and there we got second too. And so, yeah. How exciting! <laughs> oh, congratulations! You've had so much success. You talked about some of those different skills and things that you've picked up on by participating in these contests and practicing at home. What are what would you say are the kind of top three things that a youth who is trying to fine tune their fitting skills really needs to focus on to do that? Um, yeah, we uh, try to do every every time the best and uh, yeah reach the one hundred percent. So uh, yeah, we are not happy when that's only <laughs> ninety nine. So. <Yeah. laughs> Uh, yeah, we uh, try to get the 100% and that's uh, our goal and yeah. Wonderful. So what are some of your responsibilities here at Expo during and during your internship with o o Ocean View Genetics? What are you doing here at the show with them? Um, uh, we uh, clip, uh, my friend Kirsten and I, we uh, clip uh, the heifers and cows for them and for the whole string. So yeah. How many animals are in the string? Uh, twelve. Nice. <laughs> it keeps you busy for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so after the month is done, then what? What's what are you hoping to do for the remainder of the year and in the future? Uh, um, yeah, I went uh, after I 
finished my internship in the U.S. at Ocean View. We, uh, I want to get uh, uh, made an internship at in, this in Switzerland and uh, France too, and so yeah. Wonderful. So and after it, I want to study agriculture in Germany. So yeah. Wonderful. Well, congratulations, Lisa. Thank it you. is such a pleasure. <laughs> We're so excited to have you yeah. here at World Dairy Expo yeah. and participating in yeah. our youth fitting contest and being our top senior female. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Lisa. We will we will we wish you all the very best in the future and safe travels as you head back yeah. home. We'll be right back after this short commercial break. The newest member of Dairy Tech's herd was bred to help you with the newest member of yours. She's the perfect cross of Dairy Tech pasteurization technology and the simplicity of the perfect udder colostrum management system. At half the price of any competitive product on the market, pasteurizing and warming your colostrum has never been easier or more cost effective. Say hello, Matilda. Check her out at perfectudder.com. Serving as the meeting place of the global dairy industry, World Dairy Expo strives to provide experiences for attendees of all ages. Today, FFA seminars will be held and FFA-focused activities will take place throughout the day. This morning's seminar, seminars highlighted tricks of the trade for, that Culver's uses for their famous flavor of the day and why giving back to agriculture and their Thank You Farmers campaign and project is so incredibly important to that organization. The Wisconsin State FFA officers are also at World Dairy Expo today, leading a seminar about the next frontier in telling the story of agriculture. Finally, Carrie Culkins with Kids Manners Matters shared, is sharing the importance of manners and proper etiquette to help students prepare for successful upcoming careers, not only in the dairy industry, agriculture, and well beyond. These seminars are just one piece of the puzzle for our youth attendees today. A FFA texting scavenger hunt is also underway throughout the day, as well as giveaways and drawings at various commercial exhibitor booths. We encourage FFA members to visit WorldDairyExpo.com to find a complete schedule of all of these unique events. While not learning in a formal setting, the FFA students at World Dairy Expo are also competing in various contests this morning, including dairy cattle judging, forage analysis, and cheese and milk tasting, amongst others, those practical skills and things that they can apply back home and when they grow up. A few days ago, the Expo team had the opportunity to sit down with Carrie Costello, the FFA, FFA advisor at Wapan High School, which just happens to be a short drive from Madison. 
along with two of her FFA members to talk expo, contests, and all things FFA. Here at Waupon High School, and we have gone to World Dairy Expo every year. Our students have participated in the Dairy Showmanship, the Early Leadsman Contest, uh, the Dairy Judging, the uh, Crops uh, Competition, as well as the Milk Quality Contest. The Dairy Expo is, is the whole picture of the dairy industry, and actually agriculture as a whole. There's something literally for everyone. And where else, what other opportunity do we have for our high school students to go to a program that attracts so many international guests? Literally, there is something for everybody there. If we don't go, it would be crazy to not go. I, I guess I just tell our students, you're going to see some of the best quality cattle um, in the world that you're going to see right there at Expo. You have producers that are there. You've got the shows that you can see, and of course, all of the amazing exhibits. It's always, you know, cutting edge dairy industry, um, exhibitors that are going to be there, and that's, that's, that's exciting to see that constant change and innovation. You got to always get a grilled cheese because those are the best, but um, I really like to watch the dairy shows because I will like sit there and try and judge the animals myself and like kind of think what the judge is thinking, so I really like to do that. This year we're, we're doing, we are not doing the crops this year, but we're doing the rest of the contest and the students are anxious to get there, down there to watch the shows that aren't participating in the contest and of course seeing all the exhibits, they absolutely love that. World Dairy Expo is just such a phenomenal opportunity um, for, for our ag students. Truly there's something for every student, even if, they are, if their focus isn't even on the dairy industry, there's just so much there for the agricultural world for them to go and to appreciate. Thank you so much and kudos to the Wapan FFA and best of luck in the competition today. The blue barns proudly displaying Thank a Farmer can be seen across the countryside in the Midwest. Behind that campaign is the team of Culver's and joining us today is Allison Wedig, Public Relations Specialist with the Culver's Franchising System. Good morning, Allison. Good morning, Thank Laura. you for joining us. Thanks for having me. So it's so special to have Allison with us because she is definitely a veteran to World <laughs> Dairy Expo and our media room. Allison, can you talk just a little bit about yourself and all the different experiences and things that you've had throughout your youth that got you to here today? Of course. I actually just graduated from the University of Wisconsin-Madison in May. So before that, I was actively involved in all things agriculture on UW-Madison's campus. And one of those happened to be NAMA, uh, as well as working here in the media room at the World Dairy Expo. So it's kind of fun now to come full circle uh, in my big kid job, as I like <laughs> to call it. Uh, but before that, I was really actively involved in FFA. And that's where I found my roots for agriculture. Did not grow up on a farm, but found that passion for advocating and telling agriculture's story and had the opportunity to serve as the Wisconsin State FFA president. And then that kind of led me into the journey that I've taken and being involved in the agriculture industry here in Wisconsin. That's fantastic. And being that you didn't grow up in agriculture on a farm, how did you learn about FFA? And how do those experiences and opportunities present themselves to other students who may be in that similar position today? Well, lucky for me, I grew up in rural America, so I had the opportunity to see agriculture, but I didn't necessarily see how it fit with my life. My dad left the farm before I was born so he could pursue other opportunities, but he did have a landscaping business. So I always joke it started with horticulture, but now I just like talking about all things agriculture. And I think that's how students really get to see it. They see a little part that they love and then they can explore more and find of all the different pathways, which one affects their life the most and what they're passionate about. So certainly your pathway has been taking and speaking about agriculture. And today you're working for Culver's and really primarily responsible for that Thank You Farmers project. Yes. Tell us about that and all that you're doing with that project. Well, the Thank You Farmer project actually started in 2013. And for me, it was really lucky as that was when I was the Wisconsin State FFA president. So I got to connect to it on the FFA level side and now I get to work with it every day. And the Thank You Farmer project is really about one, showing that gratitude for all the work that farmers do, but then also taking a step back and looking at how we can make sure that we can feed our growing population for years to come. And we do that by supporting the youth and FFA members who we know will make that difference. So it's really fun for us to be able to 
find those ways to connect to FFA students and make sure that they know that we support them and believe in their ability to feed the growing population. And we do that through a number of different activities, the local restaurant's kitchen, and set to date, since 2013, we've actually given nearly $2 million to support of FFA and local agricultural organizations. That is fantastic. So personally, as a huge fan of all <laughs> thing Culver's, happen to have one two miles from my home, <laughs> That's good. I've always been curious, is the Thank You Farmer Project um, United States wide, or is it Midwest regionally based? And how do you, does it change outside the Midwest? And if so, if it does, how? Yeah. Culver's has over 650 restaurants in 24 different states. They actually just broke ground in our 25th state in Alabama. So as we spread, this actually is taking part in all of our restaurants. Our goal is to have every local franchisee work with their local FFA and make that impact. While the Culver Support Center, where I work with the Thank You Farmer Project as a whole, kind of works in all of those touch points, we know that the National FFA organization is in all 50 states, so we can reach them as we go and spread out through Culver's. That's fantastic. <laughs> and what's next? What are the next phases to come for the Thank You Farmer Project? Well, the Thank You Farmer Project just keeps growing. It, um, we really started to look at how we can actually help start to educate students in what we know. And so this morning in my FFA seminar, I actually had the opportunity to start talking about, okay, well, we know we want quality food, but how does that portray into quality taste? And what does that mean when thinking about what someone tastes and what makes it taste good? And so looking at how we can educate and continue to make even more impactful relationships with FFA members is how we continue to grow while maintaining all of our FFA essay contests, our blue jacket programs, and just that all that support that we can give. That's fantastic. So you talked about you had your Culver's Anatomy of Flavor. Yes. What is the secret behind those flavor of the days that we ever see every day? Well, the flavors all have their own little secret, but it's a little bit about how you can take the flavor layering with multiple different things and also adding texture. So in my workshop, we talked about the chocolate pretzel crunch, taking salted caramel, chocolate, and pretzels to kind of explore your taste buds in all different ways. And this is pretty delicious, so that helps. <laughs> I mean, right, exactly. All it's fantastic. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, yes. Allison. And thank you to Culver's for continuing the Thank You Farmer Project. It's a pleasure to visit with you this morning. And you've certainly had a busy morning. We have a lot of news still to come, so stay tuned after this message from our sponsors. We all know the value of colostrum to a newborn calf. The hard part is keeping a safe and easy to use supply on hand. Perfect Udder by Dairy Tech makes colostrum management easy. Collect it, pasteurize it, store it, warm it up, and feed it with a tube or nipple. All from a single-use biosecure bag. Everybody loves a Perfect Udder. So ask for it by name. PerfectUdder.com
Welcome back. Many of us in the dairy industry have memories filled with youth activities in and out of the show ring. But my next guests have made, made a memory of a lifetime last night and yesterday when they were named the top team of the 4-H National, the National 4-H Dairy Judging Contest. We have our team from Wisconsin here with us this morning. Welcome, congratulations. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. I'm ecstatic. Kind of still in disbelief oh, or has yeah. it started to sink it's, in? It's surreal. Yeah? yeah? Well, how about we start by, please everyone introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about yourselves. Well, um, my name is Brian McCullough, our more, more well known in the dairy industry as Mac McCullough. So, um, my parents are Chris and Kathy McCullough. We live in Judah, Wisconsin, and we live and we uh, milk 55 cows registered in Holsteins. Wonderful. I'm Rachel McCullough, also from Judah, Wisconsin. My parents are also Chris and Kathy McCullough, where we milk 55 registered Holsteins. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, I'm Paul Malka. Uh, I'm also from Judah, but we just uh, raise show heifers, and then our cows either go to their house or my grandparents. Wonderful. I'm Clayton Malcook and parents are Jeff and Terry Malkuk and we raise show heifers at our house and like Paul said, show cows go to their house or the other cows go to our grandparents' house. That's awesome. So last night, like are you still in disbelief? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. tell, like tell me how it felt when, you know, you heard Wisconsin announced as the winning team. I'll be honest with you, when the night started and we started to get hearing results and stuff, I didn't have no confidence because it, it wasn't looking good and then slowly things started progressing and progressing and we started hearing better results and I was like wow we have a crack at it nice and, then, and it happened it was just we were all holding hands together on the table just hoping and praying that, <laughs> sure. this, that this would really happen and it did and it was just the greatest feeling and that I probably ever experienced that's it was, so exciting it was awesome good so what have you done, Rachel, to prepare for the contest? I mean, what did, I'm sure the practices were probably endless. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about what your practice schedule was and how long you've been working toward to prepare for yesterday? Well, the four of us have been judging together at multiple competitions ever since we were little, but for this year, we probably started for the actual 4-H competition in about March, and then we had to go to districts in June, and then state in July and then then we came here so it's been never any process and then the past few days the UW puts on a judging contest where we can go around and just practice and we past three days we've been doing that so it's been, been a lot of practice up to this point been pretty intense yeah. about one of those things where you're probably like okay let's get this started and make some things happen you know Cole Clayton so what will you be doing now I mean it, the week started off pretty great I mean, are you gonna just be floating on cloud nine? I think I probably would be. What, what's to come for you and for this week? Uh, so we both have a string down in the tent with awesome. our show cows, and who knows what's to come with those. You never know. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. How many animals do you have in your string? Uh, there's six. Wonderful. Well, good. Showing any junior Holsteins today? No. Uh, no. We are, uh, I'm working. Jersey this afternoon. Jersey this afternoon. Exciting. Yeah, um, I'm working a string for um, uh, Chad Skippy Ryan. So wonderful. Well, good. Be fun. And, uh, so what? I mean, what were some of the things that you really felt were your keys to success yesterday? I mean, was there anything that you thought, well, gosh, thank goodness we practiced this class, or thank goodness we worked on this in reasons practice? What might have been that like key for success? I think definitely the the big practices we've had the last three days. Special thanks out to our coaches, uh, Mike Marion and Ryan Smith. They've helped us out so much. And Brian Banky has came in at the last minute and really kicked us off and got us where we are now. We can't thank him enough. That's awesome. Good. We are, you know, really lucky. And, I mean, that's just such a testament to the dairy community and everyone here at World Dairy Expo. What a small community. Everyone comes together to help each other out. Guys, congratulations. It is yeah. such a pleasure to have you all with us today. Enjoy the rest of Expo and enjoy your victory. It's, it's so exciting. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you thank for you. joining us this morning. And with that, we'll take another commercial break and hear a few words from our sponsors.
newest member of Dairy Tech's herd was bred to help you with a newest member of yours. She's the perfect cross of Dairy Tech pasteurization technology and the simplicity of the perfect udder colostrum management system. At half the price of any competitive product on the market, pasteurizing and warming your colostrum has never been easier or more cost effective. Say hello, Matilda. Check her out at perfectutter.com. A special thank you once again to the Wisconsin 4-H judging team, and we wish them the very best of luck in the, ter in the competition in Scotland they'll be competing in next. As the 52nd annual World Dairy Expo kicks off this morning, show officials have a plethora of things planned for attendees of all ages. Our expo seminars, centered around policy, research, and enhancements for the future, are back today starting again at 1 p.m. Gary Saporsky, Dairy Development Specialist for Vita Plus, will be sharing recommendations and considerations for young people as they get started in dairying. After that, Moscow Dairy of Moscow, Kansas will be our featured virtual farm tool. Tour Moscow milks 3,500 cows and focuses on the next generation of team members and all that they do. Parading on the colored shavings as we speak are the International Junior Holstein Show competitors as well as the International Ayrshire Show. This afternoon, the International Jersey and International Milking Shorthorn shows will begin on the colored shavings as well. The Tanbark Expo's pub-style restaurant is located on the east end of the sale pavilion and is back and bigger than ever. Opening in just a few minutes at 11 a.m., the Tanbark will be serving lunch until 3 p.m. and will also feature a full bar all day long. We encourage you to stop by as there will also be happy hours in the evenings. This evening's happy hour from 4 until 6 p.m. is hosted by PNC Bank. While you're visiting the Tanbark, take a load off and watch the finest dairy cattle in the world as we, have, we will be covering and showcasing our shows. The expo is set to welcome nearly 24 animals across the colored shavings and the finest dairy cattle will be parading through our show ring again this year. In addition, more than 800 companies have joined us again taking part in the largest dairy focused trade show in the world. Visit WorldDairyExpo.com for more information and to stay connected throughout the show. One of the companies you'll find in World Dairy Expo's trade show is Master's Choice. World Dairy Expo has partnered up with Master's Choice once again to create a daily vlog series during the whole show. See for yourself what takes place as exhibitors, attendees, and youth participants prepared for World Dairy Expo. time of year when nearly 70,000 people from 97 different countries march the Coliseum, the Exhibition Hall, and the New Holland Pavilion. It's that time of year when 1,700 exhibitors will show more than 2,300 cattle on the legendary colored shavings. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's that time of year when old friends get reacquainted and 900 commercial exhibitors from 28 countries show the industry what they have to offer. So gear up at the Purple Cow and grab a drink with friends at the Tan Bar. It's the first week of October, so that means it's time to enjoy the 52nd Annual World Dairy Expo.
newest member of Dairy Tech's herd was bred to help you with a newest member of yours. She's the perfect cross of Dairy Tech pasteurization technology and the simplicity of the perfect udder colostrum management system. At half the price of any competitive product on the market, pasteurizing and warming your colostrum has never been easier or more cost effective. Say hello, Matilda. Check her out at perfectutter.com. Welcome back to WXPO News. We have an exciting day. Tuesday is rocking and rolling. We have long lines out at the Badger Dairy Club cheese stand, and we're excited for many more FFA activities as well as our expo seminars and virtual farm tours getting started here shortly. As you can see, here's a shot of the Badger Dairy Club cheese stand. They have a variety of flavors featured again this year. We have mycogen seeds with a booth in there, and that is a can't miss. Those grilled cheese sandwiches along with your chocolate shake, I mean, that's my personal favorite, and I, I know that many are a fan, and I do remember flipping grilled cheese sandwiches back in the cheese stand back in my BDC days. Finally, we leave you with this morning's social shout out. This time from Marie Balbach, who shared this photo and said, Happy Expo season featuring your favorite show ring chairs. They are working hard. They're going to be on those colored shavings all week long, doing their very best for our cattle exhibitors as they showcase their champion animals across the Sonoma Red colored shavings. That's all the time we have this morning. Thank you so much for tuning in, and be sure to join us again tomorrow for WXBO News at 10 as we share more results, stories, and moments right here on Expo 360. Thank you.